what are the units of the Fourier transform? And we're going to see that the Fourier transform is actually a density function. So what does that mean? Well, let's think about the units. So here's the equation for the Fourier transform. And if we think of a signal as a voltage signal, electrical signal, a voltage signal, then this is volts being added up over time. So this is volts times time. So volts times seconds. And uh, seconds is in fact one divided by hertz, because we're thinking of the frequency domain. So actually it's volts per hertz. And I don't know if you've ever thought about that before. But this points out to us that it is a, in fact a density function. The Fourier transform, this function here, is actually a density function. Well, what do we mean by density function? Because it's volts per hertz, which is when you're dividing by per hertz, that means it's a density function. It's not just the volts. The time domain signal was measured in volts in the time domain, but when we're looking in the frequency domain, it's volts per hertz. Why does it have to be this way? Why can't it just be volts? Why can't we have a definition where it's just volts? Well, let's look at an example here. So here's an example of a Fourier transform. We're just looking at the positive frequencies of the Fourier transform. And let's think about what this actually means to us when we see something like this. Uh, well, what it means is that there's uh, this, what does this height actually mean? That's what we're talking about when we're talking about the units. So this height here, well, I think we're pretty familiar with thinking that that height tells you that there is a component of the time domain signal which is at that frequency and has that value. And now it's again, this is what we're talking about. What value does that, what does that value mean? Well, it's a density. Well, let's think, well, that means we've got a waveform component of XT which has a particular frequency, that frequency, F1, let's call it. So this is F1, a frequency at F1, and it's got that amplitude. Uh, well, okay, what about this one here? This is at, let's say, F2, we'll pick that one in the middle. Well, that's showing us that there is a component which is a higher frequency than F1, and there's higher amplitude. So I've drawn that a bigger amplitude than this one. Of course, there's another one, F3, we think about that, uh, and that's an even higher uh, again in frequency, uh, and in this case a lower amplitude. Now this kind of makes sense and we're adding these things up, but it really tells us so as soon as we think about this and as soon as we realize the fact that f is a continuous variable, so there's frequencies between these ones that I've chosen and there's ones between those and there's ones between those and there's infinite resolution in the frequency domain. So I could draw some waveforms between f1 and f2 and give them an amplitude uh, and between F2 and F3, but then I could keep doing that infinitely with infinite resolution. And if I gave them all an amplitude, and if it was the volts, then I'd be adding each time more and more voltage for every extra degree of resolution that I go to. And of course, that can't be because it's infinite resolution. You can't be having infinite voltage. The original signal did not have infinite voltage. So what it tells us is that when you think about it like this, you realize that it has to be a density. It has to be that this amplitude represents a volts over a certain frequency range. If we're looking at an exact frequency, then the frequency range is in fact zero and the contribution would be zero because volts per hertz, if the hertz is, uh, if there's no frequency range, if it's zero, then you've got zero volts. It's only when you add it up over a particular frequency range that you actually get a voltage. And that's why the Fourier transform is a density function. It is a voltage density function. So I'll put uh, voltage density function. And that's important um, when we're thinking about the Fourier transform. Okay, so if this has helped you to understand about more about the Fourier transform, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below. There's a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.